The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. And right now I want to welcome Jim to the phone. Jim, you're having some difficulty with insecurity and trust? Um, yeah, that's, that's one way of putting it. But. Okay, what's going on? Um, well, I'm I'm in a relationship with uh, this guy that um, it's going to be almost a year now that we met, and for the first five months, you know, we were just friends, um, mostly because I kind of, you know, I felt very friendly toward him, and I didn't want to have sex. Okay. I wanted to, you know, just keep it platonic at the time, but that yeah. changed in December just before my birthday, and, um, you know, I opened up saying, you know, hey, we're, we're both you know, kind of, we're both kind of promiscuous, we're both very sexual people, yeah. um, but I'm looking for something romantic, uh, but at the same time, not necessarily monogamous, you know, yeah. just something special, though, where what we do with other people can still remain casual and, and what it is, Yeah. but we have something special for, you know, for each other, and mm-hmm. that's been pretty much flourishing for the past, I'd say, gosh, about six months almost. Okay. Um, and... The issue has come up, though, where um, he has a friend, which is something different, a little bit different to me, um, not, not the same as a casual sex, sex partner, but a friend that he is now, you know, also having sexual interaction with. Okay. Um, and that is not sitting well with me. Um, and, and the whole thing about insecurities is that I've been working through tremendous insecurities from the beginning of this relationship because I'm a terribly insecure person. I'm terribly jealous and I fully acknowledge that about myself. Okay. Um, And I guess my my thing now is because I'm so aware of the insecurities that I have had and and still have, I don't know if my concern, my focus on this issue with him and this other guy that he insists is casual, you know, that his love is for me and that we're still, you know, the special pair. Um, and I don't know if my doubt and my insecurity that eats me up inside, if it's really just insecurity or if it's more of a personal if standard that I may have. A you know, personal I mean, I, I what? Tell, a personal standard okay. um, that I might have, um, you know, that maybe is just something that I'm learning. It's a standard and expectation that I have, you know, and I can't tell if it's that I'm just insecure and I don't want him to do it or if it's something that I need to listen to and, and actually say, hey, wait a second, this this isn't okay with me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm torn. Okay, so let me, t- what I'm hearing is your ambivalence, and you're trying to decide, what do I want in a relationship? And that's not clear in your own mind. That's what I'm hearing. On one hand, you're trying to structure a romantic relationship, uh, more than a friend, uh, but someone where you have a unique shared universe with one another. On one sure. hand, I'm hearing your hunger for that, that I, what I would love in life is someone who means the world to me and I mean the world to him and we share a life together and we're each other's top priority unquestionably yeah. we can lie back at night go to sleep we can make love with each other and there's no we're not we're not torn we're not rattling with doubt correct yeah. that's yeah. one side of your ambivalence the other yeah. side of your ambivalence is saying hey we're both cool we're both adults you know what isn't it cool to just be able to be promiscuous a little we're, that's how we both have we both met this way and we're both uh, we're, we're both enjoying relationship sex with other people casual sex the way you're phrasing it and why can't we continue just having sex on the outside and having that confidence that we're each other's, we're in the target of each other's love circle. Yes. Okay. That's pretty fair, yeah. So what you're asking for is a contradiction. You can't have it both ways, and you will continue to torture yourself. I have yet to hear of a case. Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad, and then Alan will be back. Romance. I wish I knew more about what girls want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That 
is interesting. I have yet to hear of a case where people have wanting people wanting not just casual sex, but people wanting a romantic relationship where they are cherished. That which is a very unique friend. It, it's different than just a friendship. Because you're sharing the most intimate part of your souls. Notice I'm not even saying bodies. You're right. saying it is through you that I experience my own psychological mirror. You're the one that makes me feel most valued and I make you feel most valued. And this is a treasure for both of us to have this relationship. If you then go and shake hands with somebody else, it's not a threat. If you go and have a conversation or have coffee with someone else, it's not a threat as long as you give evidence to your partner that it's that's all it is. But if you play around with getting between the sheets with another person, Jim, and having sex, it's hard to just mutually masturbate if you want to be graphic or self-pleasure. It's hard to do that without looking into the other person's eyes, which means you're connecting psychologically too. Mm-hmm. So I think that the the basic problem that you're having, and I'd love to get your feedback on what I'm saying, is that you're asking your mind to accept a contradiction that you can both have sex with many people and feel Un, unwavering trust that you were each other's special person. So we've got a minute left. Tell me what your thoughts are on that. Um, well, interestingly enough, um, to put it plainly, casual sex, and when I say casual sex, I'm, I'll be straight out forward, you know. Yeah. We're, we're very casual and even sometimes anonymous. I'm not going to, you know, play around that. Um, that has really never been a problem. We've actually played together with other guys, and it has never once been a problem. The first time it has become an issue for me is because this this other person is becoming more than just casual sex. They're actually becoming friends and okay. still having sex, so that changes it for me. Okay, well, and here is works. the problem. Here is the yeah. problem. Whenever you play around with casual sex, it's like a... There, there are books for... for um, for male female partners that are called not just friends whenever you play around with sex you are dealing with intimacy and maybe you can keep it casual right. with some people but you're always at risk of undermining your unique bond and so right. that's the fire you play with with the lifestyle that you're leading and apart from other right. things too you know there's always right. you hear sure. it all the time I'm sure the risk of AIDS sure. and the rest so sure. so listen thank you very much for your call and I hope it gave you some food for thought to explore that ambivalence Jim very much so. Okay. Will I be able to uh, go back and listen to this? One yes, you will. Yes, you will. If you hold on, I'll talk to you after the break. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. You can't leave yet. The doctor said it takes 48 hours to get that stuff out of your system. I wonder how long it takes to get someone you're stuck on out of your system. I know how you feel, Miss Kubelik. You think it's the end of the world, but it's not. I went through exactly the same thing myself, and I was mad about it. But I knew it was hopeless, and I decided to end it all. You know where I finally shot myself? Where? Here. In the knee? It was a year before I could bend the knee. <laughs> but I got over the girl in three weeks. Still lives in Cincinnati. Has four kids and gained 20 pounds. Sends me a fruitcake every Christmas. And we've all gone through those experiences where someone that we love or we value tells us that they no longer value us. And then we feel discarded, tossed away, uh, just useless. And that's when we're at high risk. Because if you you draw the conclusion when someone breaks up with you that there's something defective about me, that there's something fundamentally wrong with me that I don't know about and that this person knows about, that's going to cause the most pain. But if you say... I know my good characteristics and I know there are things I want to work on and maybe they mess me up in this relationship a little bit. Maybe I can work on those and improve myself, make myself more lovable uh, so that the next relationship I will be even stronger and I will enjoy living with myself whether or not I find a partner. That's a much better outcome. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, 
Go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Dr. Ellen Kenner. When searching for a potential soulmate, eliminate anyone in whose presence you feel constant friction, annoyance, resentment, anxiety, or self-doubt due to differences in values, personality, habits, tastes, interests, and so on. If you feel like this during the dating process, the problems will get worse. Of those remaining in your potential love pool, pay special attention to anyone who makes you feel fully visible and is a joy to be with, assuming it's not false flattery. Then decide if you can ignore any habits, taste, and personality traits you don't care for. Are these trade-offs minor or fundamental to you? Are they likely to grow or diminish in importance? Things that bother you a little at first may bother you more later. This is another reason not to rush into a permanent relationship. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.